for I'm it. just waiting for all the heartbreak to come when Arsenal again mm. lose the title like last season and City again yeah. win the title like last season. Man City versus Arsenal. We go to Etihad again. Um, AJ is shaking right now, but I have never been more confident. This is the first time that we, before facing City that I've been super confident. Yeah, this, yeah. this looks like a relegation club going to a main club, trying to be confident that they'll like stay. <laughs> this, that sort of energy that you guys are wow. bringing in. So, yeah, I need to remind you that this is Etihad, bro. Need to remind you. About Arsenal, not United. What do you mean mm. by relegation club? <laughs> you are the relegation border, bro, not us. I have to remind you, this is Etihad. And, it's not... and this guy was wearing Chelsea jersey last spot. Yeah. So, bro, all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. All, all over the I'm relegation border. I'm just waiting for all the heartbreak to come when Arsenal again mm. lose the title like last season and City again yeah. win the title like last season. My trauma is real. It'll be more traumatic you... for you if City win. Four feet, Ferguson's legacy all gone down the drain. I mean, I mean that's no. already gone. Four bro, feet, City's four legacy feet. has the asterisk. All the time, so there's no legacy <laughs> in that case. Four feet over AJ rubbing it in my face. And... <laughs> yeah. Can't you, can't you want to see me happy sometime, please? Like, uh, actually, come out just, little... just, just to be symbolic and in tune with your club's legacy, I got a bottle with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez. Okay, let's let's talk about the game a little bit. Exact same fixture last season was the final nail in the coffin for Arsenal's title hopes. 4-1. Yeah, I see it, bro. I know. Unfortunately, we had a Bob holding at that point in time and now we don't have him. He's not even playing for Crystal Palace, so you see what kind of relegation fodder defenders we had at that point in time. But yeah, it's it's come back again. Etihad same almost similar times a little earlier, sort of like a title decider. Few stats I wanted to share. Arsenal have scored 17 and conceded zero goals in the last three Premier League away games. So, you know what's coming. 4-0 City. Uh, (laughs) um, And Rodri has not lost in 60 games for City since when starting Tottenham. since he Tottenham. He hasn't lost since Feb 2020. Feb 2020. That's more than a year. Uh, Arsenal, Arsenal haven't asked. Yeah, go ahead. I'm saying we also didn't lose 49 games in a row. So, mm. and then we lost. So, stats are meant to be broken. All <laughs> yeah. these streaks are meant to yeah. come to it. Bro, yeah. even then you couldn't get to 50, right? Exactly. You lost at 49. So, he won't, yeah. he won't get to one year, two months. That's what I'm, all I'm saying. Another one, Arsenal haven't lost or drew a game since the start of the year. They have just mm. been only W's. So one of the records is definitely getting broken today. If it's a if it's a draw, then none of them are, which is going to be very, very sad. The only name that comes to mind is the duo of Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland. Do we know if KDB is fully fit? I think it's a soccer situation where he's, he's hmm. fit. He's been kept out. He's, of... he's injured. He for, yeah, he played for 123s. He had a good run in apparently. And then he's supposed to resume training with the, the full team once they're back. So yeah, I don't think he's sitting out. He's definitely playing. Yeah. Um, Haaland is definitely fit and ready to play the game. Another other injuries from City: John Stones injured, Ake injured. Who else? Akanji, Kyle Walker. Walker, Kyle Walker injured. Um, Bukayo Saka injured. A lot of injuries, and we'll see what happens when the lineup comes out. But ben we can did not travel. <laughs> <laughs> the most honest guy. Ben White was playing Uno. He wasn't even like lying in Uno. He wasn't even yeah. playing all these. Arteta is like go to the camp and then fake an injury and come back. He's like my giant hero. I don't care. I don't lie. I'm an honest person. But yeah, if I mean if all the injured, like go Martinelli, on. Gabriel, and Jesus, all three of them injured. Yeah, yeah. Martinelli yeah. genuinely, I feel like injured. Jesus, I'm not too sure sure of, and Gabriel definitely not injured. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a, yeah, he's definitely not injured. It's not easy to injure him also. Um, so if all of the injuries are true, let's assume in that situation, then City definitely at a very big disadvantage. Yeah. Um, if all the injuries are true, they don't. I don't see them having a defense. Like it's it's going to be very makeshift. Is is Saliba this time stopping Haaland? Because last time in that four one, he wasn't there. He was injured. Bro, Haaland is not the same this season as last season. I think last season by this time he had scored twenty eight goals mm. and he scored I think eighteen goals this time. It's it's quite a lot even then. But I think you have to also see the kind of clubs he scored against. He's like pumped up his goal tally against like all these minor teams. And I definitely think Saliba will like control Haaland and. I 
I don't I don't see Haaland bossing the game tomorrow this weekend. Yeah. But no going to lie even thinking about it is giving me like heavy breaths. Like I'm actually like you know not able to like keep it inside but but yeah I think it'll be a difficult battle. I don't, I don't see it as simple as it was or not as easy as it was at Emirates especially when you know two potential title rivals go against each other. We saw against Liverpool and City. City were far the better team on paper but Liverpool even with kids ran away and gave them like a really good competition. Probably deserved to win and City's atmosphere although it's been criticized all the time I think they will turn up they will do all those tifos and like terrible winners and all of those things and you never know what arsenal will do when it comes to those situations but i mean your team your team fans players everyone included feel a lot more confident this year compared to last year right? because last year felt like lot was riding on that one fixture i feel like just being in the champions league mm. and everything eases the nerves a bit i mean like because potentially that could be a repeat fixture if you guys go through and if they go through you guys will face two week mm. could potentially build up two more city arsenal fixtures so it doesn't feel like it's the last of those fixtures it has that like air and aura to it mm. in my head and for what it's worth like league positions and everything involved so far up until this point this season arsenal have been a better team they have the goals to show for it they have less a number of goals conceded they look more like hungrier than city in general so they have a lot right for them on the flip side like city just wakes up around this time of this year bro like so this is a perfect fixture for them to like wake up and announce themselves too and I'm, i'm leaning more on that side because premier league this time i think city will make it because they yeah. you already it's hard to beat city home and away only brentford have done it and let's face it like you don't have ivan tony so we have we have march words He's called March Words. He rises up in March. I've heard from Chelsea fans a lot. When is this? When is this fixture? Is it on thirty first of March? Thirty first, yeah. Thirty first, bro. We are March Words, yeah. But genuinely, I think if you had to ask me, key player for Arsenal this time compared to last season, I would say Havertz. You saw in the Community Shield yeah. game how he manhandled Ruben Dias and how he just you know stuck in there. He was like a very awkward figure to handle. He was winning all the duels. He's just like this player who's making runs which City defenders could. and anticipate so he is someone and now his form is also good at that point of time he was just starting in form was bad people were still against him first time i've seen he scored against france yeah. germany i scored against france which is which is good he was pretty good in the international break i think it's havertz time this time i think havertz is definitely important i think havertz and diaz is one of those key battles they've been at it and as you said he gave him a very hard time in community shield and also he was very con- like he was consequentially was he provided the assist for the winner at the emirates right when all four of our substitutes got involved into mm-hmm. making that goal come to fruition. So so he'll definitely be important. He's also a dual monster, so that helps in terms of like just pinning Diaz back. And if at all John Stones is not available, then it becomes even more, you know, he becomes an even more valuable piece in the whole chess game. Another battle I would say is Saka versus whoever plays on the left left back spot. Mm-hmm. Mostly it's going to be Ake and Ake mm-hmm. pocketed Saka at the Emirates. So that is going to be crucial if you know how how is Saka how fit he is and whether he can overcome his you know manchester city demons because he hasn't been really you know himself when it comes to manchester city so i think that's that's another key one that we need to look out for and saka needs to stand up and and deliver this time around i think guardiola could also play left rico lewis could play right that could be their full back situation i was reading a stat about nathan ake this season and apparently he's only been dribbled past 5 times in this entire season in the premier league like 1900 minutes it's yeah. like something like that it's yeah. insane bro and by far i think ake is like city's best defender right now i mean ruben diash was last season but diash is has like his form is dipped like haland so yeah. if like city's best hope is to like sort of keep saka, saka under control and if at all mm. you guys can uh, if, if they can control havertz then that would be a good way of like then then getting back into the game and like getting a couple of goals so well, i mean if declan rice doesn't start this conversation is not even happening right like city are yeah. actually the favorites it speaks a lot like you mm. like he is going to be instrumental uh but like in my mind like would he start like the same combination that's been working like jorgin mm. jorginho and declan or would he just go with declan lone cuber i'm thinking leaning more towards the former because i think i like that combination a lot better it frees up declan and just like that physicality up front um so definitely declan rice will have a big impact but he will not be the difference maker you know he'll make the things tick he'll make you know things work like a metronome in the midfield and everything but i think the difference maker i'm looking at the key key matchups and i think whoever starts on the left wing will make a big big impact the reason why is Kyle Walker is a big question mark and Walker for all his 
like inefficiencies he does show up in big games around this time of the season he will be a big mess and if rico lewis is starting that's an area where you guys can exploit the disadvantage that you guys have right now is that martinelli is out injured he would have been obviously starting so right now i'm wondering like, would he go with Kai has a false nine and like Trossard on the left like he's been doing or does he like switch it up a bit like by pushing because Kai can play anywhere in that front three too right like so maybe Kai on the left could be an option with Jesus also mm. as a nine I doubt it really I think Trossard is like uh, tried and t- like whenever Martinelli has been out I think Arteta has trusted in Trossard so awesome. very likely that it will be Trossard Havertz and um and Saka on the right Declan Jorginho pivot and Odegaard in 10 to be honest i don't see kai in left wing at all <clears> i just <throat> don't. neither do i see him as an lcm because i think for all his qualities his biggest weakness is passing when it comes to like you know knitting yeah. knitting things like he can make the final pass that's not a problem yeah. he can but make he like a pass. slick touch when yeah. the pace of the ball is really high but he can't generate yeah. that pace himself Right. He can't really <clears throat> knit together with like, for example, hmm. Odegaard and him can't be like you know one-to-one passing and this yeah. is going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the game. So left wing. Yeah. He's a striker. See... He's the most effective yeah. there. Um, Maybe Jesus he's... can play yeah. left, yeah. Yeah. but I think Trossard has been more effective. Arteta personally, I think he's the guy he's going to go towards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you guys see? Do you guys see any like evident Achilles heel in like Arsenal? Like in the sense that I look at the squad, every position looks fine, but I see poor Kivior, and I'm like, hmm, someone's gonna like rip him a new one someday. Like, is that is that With going the- to be like this? With the way he's playing right now, I highly doubt it because he's been like one of the better performers. He's been looking really, really sharp defensively. I don't think he's the kind of player who can get bullied that easy. He can definitely, you know, miss the marker and maybe like a finger runs past him, but he's not going to be physically bullied. I doubt it. That's that's where Kivior is strong. Except for Haaland, I think most of the remaining attackers are not really physical. Like you look at Ford and you look at Bernardo Silva, right? They're both like very skillful, like. they have mm. their pacey and they know how to like dribble past the player defender and go forward and i think that's foden has been in really top form and i think even in the last game silva scored a goal which against newcastle right so if either of them play on the right wing i think they can exploit <laughs> the weakness of kivior in arsenal's back four my achilles heel is not in defense i think mm-hmm. defense is going to be locked mine is like again like you mentioned nihal on the right wing when saka is going to play who, whoever mentioned ake i forgot but ake uh, yeah. okay, if and he's probably going to pay Play, and a lot of our attacks go through Saka. If Saka is pinned down, we have to go through Trossard or go through the center, which is which limits us. So if they can successfully lock down Saka, which is possible, very possible, that's the Achilles heel. For me, it's Jorginho. Not because of any of his weaknesses. I think he brings in a lot. But the key, like the most important battle in the game, is midfield. Whoever controls that midfield will probably get more chances. Haaland has underperformed his xG. I think he's only behind two more players in terms of underperforming his xG. So it depends on the. Day, whether he turns up and gets his finishing boots on, but if it's Declan versus Rodri and Declan man marks Rodri, I think Rodri can be stopped. But then the question comes up: Can Jorginho deal with the you know the free roaming nature of Phil Foden? And that's the biggest problem in my head. Like you know, because Jorginho is for all his quality, he's not mobile enough. He doesn't have that pace, and in one-on-one defending, he can be really suspect. So I think if if that gets exposed, then it might be a problem. And if they if we concede first, I think it's probably is going to be bad for us. All right. I think we'll we'll do predictions, but I want to do this till the end of the season. It's called prediction league. We all will have predictions for Premier League games or UCL games or whatever. The correct result is going to be three points. The correct outcome is going to be one point, and incorrect is going to be zero points. Nihal, starting with you, it's going to be one-one because there is like very little separating between these two teams. Safe, uh, motherfucker. And I, want, and I want this Premier League popcorn, which like I want to eat till the rest of the season to continue. uh it's going to it is going to score first arsenal will grow into the game because i see a lot more resilient side this time they'll not, they'll not take it lying down so they'll come back and score another goal yes. okay 1-1 one, one for nehal noted down sid bro i think arteta has had many sleepless nights over this fixture given how this fixture this fixture defined their outcome last season so i think that itself is the biggest achilles heel for arsenal this time around so i think it's going to be what 2-1 for city i don't want to predict this one <laughs> it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a fancy prediction or rosy one for us but uh, 
Uh, I, to be honest, I kind of disagree with Sid. I feel like Arteta has always put out a team that can beat City, and this is not just this season. Even last few seasons, we've had our fair share of unlucky red cards and like you know all of those things. Like I remember Thomas, oh uh, sorry, Gabriel got sent off like a couple of seasons ago, and Rodri scored like a last minute winner where from a set piece, which was like a pretty lame goal to concede. So things like that have happened. Uh, but I think <laughs> it's going to be, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Go uh, three-one City. Three one city. city. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! You pessimist piece of yeah. rubber. <laughs> you piece of banana. <laughs> I see us. I see us losing this one and then thrashing them in the Champions League. But... Okay, okay. Don't make it up for it. In the Champions League prediction, you'll be two one city. I know it. No, you'll be three one. <laughs> you'll, <only. laughs> you'll be three one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm scared now. AJ has predicted. Um, Dude, I'm... Uh, yeah, no, I I have never been more confident for a game, for a big game. So I'm gonna go for two-one Arsenal. I'm gonna support my team, stick by them. 